All right, who's next? Who's next? Yes, our uh, next guest is none other than Maitin Yumon. It's a young indigenous uh, right activist from Qing community in <laughs> Myanmar. She's a program director of Indigenous Peoples Development, program of Qing Human Rights Organization. She is an executive council member of Myanmar Indigenous Peoples Network. She's representing indigenous youth to the Executive Council of Asia Indigenous Peoples Pact. She's also serving as Asia focal person for global indigenous youth caucus since 2016. She has been working with indigenous communities in Myanmar and Asia for the past, past several years, being a part of strengthening platform for indigenous youths and indigenous women across Asia. Sally? Yeah, uh, my theme, um, unarguably one of the rising stars within the indigenous movement. Um, uh, it's see, see her a lot, climate change, uh, SDGs, everywhere. She's very much uh, wanted by a, a lot of um, UN agencies, institutions, um, youthfulness, strength, um, perspectives. Um, so before I go and jump into the questions, um, my theme, um, give us some context, some background, the short two minute origin story about yourself. Okay, uh, thank you very much, but i um, a little bit reluctant to, to accept the, the, the status of like a rising star, blah, blah. Oh, you're there, you're there <laughs> already? Thank you so much uh, for the nice introduction. Um, my thing, you Mon, um, uh, so greetings. Another Mo from Chinland, and it's really great to to be here with all of you. All the people that I look up to uh, are seniors, and uh, who have always like uh, uh, led us, uh, and who always uh, trusted uh, youths uh, to hand over to. So to see all the uh, such uh, indigenous leaders to see and to speak alongside them, I feel really honored. Um, so, my Tin Yumon from Chin Land. Uh, I work for Chin Human Rights Organization and now um, seven years with the organization now. Um, so, when I first joined uh, Indigenous Peoples Movement, uh, actually, I, I thought that I will uh, be in this field for about two years, just like collecting some uh, experience and then I'll go for the studies. I'll become some sort of like professional in some uh, sort of um, interesting field. But I ended up working here uh, for more than seven years now, and I can't uh, think the time I will leave this, uh, this work uh, because I'm so much in love with the work that I'm doing. Um, so um, I'm working, uh, so the, the, the work, uh, the part that I love most about my work is I get a chance to work with the people that I really represent and uh, my people. So it's mainly like working together with uh, people on the grassroots uh, 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 and uh, like being a voice for the voiceless people. This is uh, how I uh, usually narrate my work, being the voice of uh, voiceless people. So I, yeah, I'm representing, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, the moderator is introduced a lot. And um, yeah, I think I, I will continue this work for so many years. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much. And I, I'm sorry put, to put, put a lot of uh, fluff around it about like Rising Star, but um, just my observation, of course. Um, and also thank you so much for um, yeah, being, being you. Um, question about like um, how much opportunity, because yeah, you, you, you are one of the, if you're not a rising star, you, you're, like, you're, you're one of the upcoming uh, representatives. Um, how much opportunity do you think that the indigenous movement, the international indigenous movement, gives for the creation or training of the new leaders? Um, yeah, um, from my own experience, uh, like you said, I'm yeah. like a, a stepping up uh, a bit more than like the, the usual youth I used to be uh, after joining this indigenous people's movement. Um, so actually this indigenous people's uh, movement gave us, especially youths like us, uh, uh, so much space to grow and uh, to learn. Um, so uh, 
the best example that uh, from my own experience is uh, so we consider now as being a, a part of this uh, global discussions and uh, now being uh, getting a chance to communicate uh, with people who have uh, who are going through the same similar things who are facing similar issues and getting a chance to talk at the global level is a very big uh, power for uh, many indigenous youths and many indigenous peoples and uh, for example for myself uh, after join before and after joining the international community is uh, is totally different the the impact that uh, the impact of my work also on the ground because the way like people accept us is like um, so these uh, international mechanisms were all the different mechanisms, like uh, starting from the UNFPFII, like MRIP, and many other, also at the regional level. So for example, looking at the climate change, uh, it, uh, for us, uh, youths, uh, it, it's like a very uh, far away space to, to go in and talk, but due to this uh, in indigenous people's movement, then even like very young indigenous uh, representatives get a chance to uh, to go as observers and to participate in these negotiations and sometimes even with uh, these uh, uh, like uh, state representatives so it gives us uh, the being in the process itself I think is a sort of empowerment for uh, many of us uh, so uh, this also gives us uh, energy to influence many discussions, negotiations that we are having back uh, in the country. So uh, this international uh, indigenous peoples movement has, uh, how should I say, has empowered us uh, to be uh, influential in the, the uh, local level. So uh, this is what I see. So I think this is not only for the youths, but also uh, for different levels. And even uh, in the regional level, what we are doing right now is like uh, we have regional platforms. So uh, sometimes international platforms are very like broad and uh, sometimes it takes so much energy and so much effort to be a part of them. But uh, we also have regional ones uh, where the indigenous, indigenous people's movement can clearly be seen and the impacts also. So uh, I think, yes, indigenous people's uh, movement has given us so much uh, space and opportunity for uh, many indigenous peoples. Um can, can I because you also you're also involved in for example IFAD um you're very familiar in, in that in the processes anything going on in there that you want any these people to think about uh or um you have to talk about or start working with uh yes um so I myself I uh, am the steering committee member uh, of IFAD's Indigenous Peoples Forum. So IFAD is an international fund for agriculture development. Many people already know, uh, but I would like to introduce a little bit because it's a funding uh, agency, a, a UN specialized agency, uh, which you, uh, mostly handle uh, funding, uh, which gives loans and grants to states and development agencies who are working in, uh, in their uh, uh, mandated uh, theme mandated area. So uh, IFAD, uh, what is interesting in IFAD is that uh, it has uh, its own indigenous people's forum uh, with uh, which uh, happens every two years uh, in Rome, uh, starting in 2011 as a result of the recommendations uh, by the indigenous leaders uh, to have an institutionalized mechanism within IFAD to engage with its operations, because IFAD has operations all around the world, right? So uh, with uh, all its, its operations in indigenous territories. Um, so uh, IFAD gives a space and a mechanism for us to, uh, to directly uh, intervene the, the, the projects funded by IFAD uh, uh, that, that are operating in our uh, respective countries. Um, so um, they also have a policy on engagement with indigenous peoples. And another, uh, another facility that I think it's important for indigenous peoples to know is indig uh, indigenous peoples assistance facility, which is usually called IPAF. Uh, so it is um, 
uh, sort of grunt uh, mechanism uh, for uh, indigenous grassroots organizations to apply, uh, mainly for uh, agricultural related uh, things. So they provide uh, at least uh, 35 projects every cycle. So I think it's really worth uh, trying for indigenous peoples because they directly um, uh, they directly uh, uh, support indigenous peoples' livelihoods uh, on the ground, uh, not only funding, but also technical assistance they are giving. Um, so uh, what I think uh, I, would, I, I really want to highlight is that it's really important for us to use the existing mechanism, uh, because what we are seeing right now is also uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, in each region, uh, there are three representatives uh, from uh, steering committee uh, but what we are seeing is like there are sometimes there are communication gaps and we are not effectively applying the mechanism that ifat has actually ifat didn't create but indigenous peoples uh insisted that this is uh, the mechanism is created so i think it's really important for us to really apply uh, the, the opportunity and try to intervene uh, because uh these uh loans that they usually give to states are not really like small amounts, for example. Uh, they are really, really big millions uh, numbers. So I think it's really important because this is also very much related to uh, land grabbing because uh, states usually use uh, these uh, uh, grants and these loans to really to extend their uh, government activities in indigenous people's areas, which usually uh, causes uh, more land grabbing. So I think it's really important to, uh, to, to use all these mechanisms that exist, yeah. I have, a, I have a, a, maybe a slight personal question. You don't have to answer it um, if you don't like to. Um, what I, at least from, from my experience, um, what I really needed, when I, what I had actually, when I was growing up into the movement was like a, uh, a group or people that I listened to, like a mentor group. Um, do you have something like that? Do you have a mentor or a group of people that listen, listen to? And yeah, give, give a little bit more context about if so, how that manifested and how it manifests in this time. Um, yes, um, I do have um, a group of a number of mentors. Um, so, but not like permanent, uh, like uh, uh, a fixed set of people, but sure, sure, from time yeah. to time, what I always do is like open myself to, to get uh, new learnings. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, when I first uh, joined this movement, I, I was really overwhelmed because uh, like, as, as, as you just said, like the, the demands also increasing and uh, I, I, I increasingly feel that I need to be everywhere. Like I need to be in the village, I need to be in the community at the same time, I need to, uh, d d this policy, state policy will have an impact on indigenous peoples and this meeting will happen and the international negotiations are going on. So, so many things. So there were times that I felt like I needed rest or I, I, I need someone who will tell me you need to uh, consider doing this. This is more important. And uh, like that, we need, we always need a group of people who will show us uh, the light and who will help us uh, not to uh, lose sight of what our uh, original aims and uh, what are the most uh, our, our our priorities, right? So. Uh, the first group of mentors uh, when I joined this movement was uh, my senior colleagues because they have been in this negotiation process. They were a part of drafting this UN drip, and so they, they have uh, they already had so much experience in that. And they were the first uh, group of people who uh, who mentored me. And uh, then when I met more people, uh, I I think I I can't I. I can't even count uh, all my uh, mentors because some we meet very short time, but I do uh, so much learning from them. So uh, yeah, I do have a group of mentors and some are in this group, <laughs> in the speakers and they know themselves, I'm, I'm sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, it's, it's good, so that uh, people, 
that um, that would like to get into the movement that that they know that there's it can be overwhelming you know there's a lot of noise and you have to be able to listen to the signal and having a mental group is very can be can be very helpful um my thing your 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 vision um what's where do you see yourself in eight to ten years in the movement if not in or not in the movement what, what do you see um t- um I'm sure I will still be in the movement, but the way mm-hmm. I engage myself, uh, would, uh, there will be a big change, uh, I'm sure, because also of uh, due to, the, because many of the changes that I really want to drive is at the, it, many things need to start at the local level and at the national level. And uh, sometimes it's like vice versa, some changes we need to do at the international level. And uh, the, for example, climate change actions and all these things, uh, the, it's always good to start uh, the negotiations at the international level, which can have a very good and big influence at uh, the, all the implementations at the national level. But I'm, I'm, I'm also starting to see many things that I need to start uh, doing from the local level and at the national level. And I can see myself um, now I'm, I'm also uh, doing some preparation to be in the policy making like representing my peoples and too i might be into in maybe starting in next 5 years i i um i plan to 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 be into uh party politics and then to run election to represent my people more effectively in the um yeah uh, in this uh policy making uh platform um but i will still that that one is also a way of being in the movement because there are many things that we need to drive uh, because we Myanmar are a very young uh, like we are only like five years old democracy so uh, we are uh, the, the political landscape uh, it demands that uh, we 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 are there to, to so that our voice be heard and be reflected in all the lawmaking process yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maithin. Uh Last 60 seconds. Anything that, that you want, want to talk about, something that we forgot to talk about, something that you want to um, share, maybe? Because um, okay. definitely, yeah. definitely, um, when, whenever you're going to, uh, uh, to do the, the political work, um, we will help you. Um, as the mentors, I'm sure, will help you out as well. Um, yeah, any, anything that you, you still want to uh, share that I yeah, forgot to? Yeah, um uh yes um uh yeah i think uh it's it's always the 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 learning and you know the solidarity that we have among ourselves uh whatever we are uh, in in our own local community or when we go to this international uh um spaces uh where uh it's the most important thing for us is to connect what is uh, really happening on the ground to what we are discussing at the international level. So I, I see myself more as a bridge uh, for right now to connecting all these uh, things, discussions happening at the international level and the reality uh, on the ground. So I think this is something that I would like to do uh, also more in the future. And yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to share. Oh, thank you so much for 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 um for being with us. Um, and I know it's late over there. Um, so I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, Ini, um, how was that? What What do you think? Well, uh, I'm and I'm, I'm I am amazed, man. Uh, what this, I can say what she has done and her age and what she said about consider that we are being considering part of a global discussion. The Jude. Uh, in regional and well, I I would uh, I would like to stay with the with the word bridge to be a bridge between the communities and the diplomacy and everything to bring and uh, to both ways what's going on and the different side you know that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it is. 